Hello folks, Reza here. Let's continue with our facial rigging for beginners. In this video, we are going to focus on the hair geometry and the tongue geometry. Now for the hair, um, we are going to use the same method we used for the eyebrows, and that is a simple wrap deformer. And when you apply multiple wrap deformers to the skin, you kind of need to make sure that you have a healthy skinning process and the amount of influence and distribution of the influence on the vertices is correctly applied. Now this rig is by no mean finalized when it comes to skinning. I still need to go and make final changes and tweaks, but for the most part, it needs to be finalized. So I'm going to look at the neck. It looks okay. Head almost plays no role. Lower jaw controls the lower jaw vertices. Then we've got lids, lower lids and upper lids, and they all influence the correct amount of vertices. So with that in mind, I'm going to use the same method I used for the eyebrows. I certainly made a promise to keep it simple and that's how it's going to go. Select the hair geometry, select the character's face. Of course, wrap is categorized as a deformer. So we're going to go to a deformer menu, wrap, option box. And I don't need to change anything. If I go ahead and reset, the only thing we changed was volume to surface. And that should do the trick for us. So if I select the controller and press R, you can see it follows beautifully. The good thing about wrap deformer is you don't need to worry about areas like this. So if I go and kind of turn the head to the extreme, you can see the deformation takes place with no stretching. Everything follows beautifully. There is no object poking out. Very effective, very fun, very easy to follow. Fantastic. Well, that was quick. Let's get to the tongue. So for the tongue, I need to rig the character. So um, one thing you guys need to be mindful of is you need to study what sort of deformation you would like to get out of tongue. You need to think about what sort of dialogue that character is going to say. Do we need to worry about twisting the tongue or is it just rolling and swaying? Uh, and this is something that you need to discuss with the lead of the department or the project that you're working on. You kind of need to study that and find out what sort of movements and gestures you need for the character. And based on that, plan your rig. So what I'm going to give you is just general guidelines. But at the end of the day, you need to kind of customize that method and kind of sculpt it to your project. Now, with that out of the way, let's uh, expand hand this group node and then I'm going to select all the eyebrows press hedge to hide them inner mouth probably don't need them and hair don't need them hide them and you may have noticed that I have face base one face base two hidden here and you may wondering what's going on here D did i duplicate something by accident and hit them actually no these are your wrap deformers so make sure not to delete them because if you delete them then you no longer have your wrap deformer and that's why they're hidden so let's not worry about that now uh, for the tongue i'm going to think about how many segments i need and again going back to the main uh, concept, what sort of movement you would like to get out of this. So I tend to have at least three joints in this. If you think you need more, then well, you need more. But I'm going to go for now to the top menu. Uh, with the geometry selected, I tend to enable this icon here. It tends to put the joint on the surface or inside the surface, which is effective. You can always use a uh, side view as well. You don't need to start from the base because the first joint that you insert won't move. Basically, the tongue roll, if I bring this grease tool, the tongue roll happens like so. So this bit almost never moves, 
right? So with that in mind, I'm going to select the joint, enable wireframe on shaded because I have a tendency to just insert the joints on these loops, makes it a lot easier for you to skin it afterwards. So I'm gonna select from probably here, going to have one and then two and then three and then four. I think four is enough for humanoid character. Um, if you have creature, then that's a completely different story. Now with that, let's rename them really quick or you don't want to forget about it. So I'm going to hold down shift, expand the group node, select the first one and that's gonna be JNT Tong A01. Second one is going to be JNT Tong B01. And next one, C01 and D01. And of course, for the last one, it's going to be JNT E D01. You really don't need to skin the last one. It really doesn't play any role in here. So I'm gonna select all four. I'm gonna select the geometry. Then you can go to skin, bind skin, reset the tool, select the joints, skinning method. Uh, I'm gonna just leave it at classic and binding method. I'm gonna go geodesic because we need a little bit of quality in here. Um, two or three for max influence should do the trick and then go bind. Now from this point onward, you should know what to do. It's all a matter of spending the time and fixing the influence. So I usually select the hard brush. I go in here, value of one. And let's see what we're dealing with. We've got D, we've got C and B and A. You can see everything is sort of all over the place. So um, you can always go to top menu. I, find this actually quite effective. Lower the size of your brush, holding down B to the left and to the right, and sort of add influence. That's all there is to it. Now, you may get some smoothness here. This is something that you need to experiment. I honestly don't know right now if I need that level of smoothness or if I need that kind of nice smooth transition between each joint. For now, what I'm going to do is just to add influence and then worry about the other side of it or smoothness of it later. All right, so um, without adding any smoothness to the middle joints, I'm just going to select the first joint and you can see the deformation I'm getting is okay. I mean, it's not too bad. It could be better, especially some, around some of these areas. You can always go and uh, fix it, especially if you have a close-up shot, then it's going to be super obvious. For this one, definitely, I need a little bit of smoothness. Why? Because if I rotate to the next axis, you can see because everything is so linear, then I'm getting a little bit of rigidity around these guys. So it kind of collapses. So that's, that's the part that you need to spend the time. Press, then go in here and keyframe it. So we get something like that. If I go in here and select these points, on the side, some of these points like so. Best tool to use is hammer weight tool. So with that, I'm gonna to go to skin, hammer skin weight, and instantly you get a good result. So these are the sort of aftercare situation that you need to um, be mindful of. Spend the time and see if you can finesse and tweak the situation. I can go to hammer skin and get the job done. Uh, so these type of effects, these type of deformation, uh, and it really doesn't take much time. It's a very simple geometry, so it's not going to take any of your time, but it is important to uh, polish the amount of influence. 
and make sure what you have works for you. Obviously, ideally, if you want to, you can always zero out the orientation of your end joint. We didn't even skin it, so it's not really that important. Now, with that out of the way, let's think about what sort of deformation we need. Now, ideally, you would like to put in place some controllers. You want to have an interface on the side, and that interface is going to control the movement of the tongue. But again, going back to facial rigging for beginners, we tend to keep things simple. And what I mean by saying simple is custom attributes. They're fairly effective, easy to, to create, and the link between the movement and a custom attribute is actually fairly straightforward. So let's get to it. I would like to have three attributes. And where should we place them? I tend to place them on the lower jaw. I'm going to bring the geometry back. The lower jaw um, would be a good place to insert the attributes. So I'm going to go to modify, add attribute. You can name the movements, for example, say roll or, or sway. But uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to give, uh, give these attributes X, Y, and Z. So we know how to tie them when it comes to linking the movement of the joints to the custom attributes. So tongue X, and then I'm going to go tongue Y, and then tongue Z, which is probably the most important one when the character wants to say L, then that would be the one that you use. With that, I'm going to go OK. So you can see I have three attributes. If you would like to have like a separator, uh, you can certainly do that. You can have a displayable attribute to separate the two. So it's not going to be too difficult to distinguish. But again, that's fine. Now with that, I'm going to hide the geometry again. So I can select the bones. Now we go to Windows General Attribute and the tool that we're going to use is Connection Editor. Very straightforward, this one. So select the controller, reload to the left so you have access to these three. And then you select the joints and reload them to the right. Now we don't care about movement or scale. All we care about is rotation. So rotate X goes to rotate X. Simple as that. Um, tongue Y goes to rotate Y. And tongue Z goes to rotate Z. Done. You can see uh, they're connected. Now to clean up, I need to connect this to the lower jaw. So select the whole chain, shift select the lower jaw and press the P key. So if I, if I zoom back and select the lower jaw, you can see the tongue follows. Now I'm going to bring the character back. Let's actually test what we did. Hide the joints. So no distraction. And I don't want to select the geometry by accident as well. Now I'm going to open the jaw. So if I bring it over here, open the lower jaw with the lower jaw control selected, I can see I can do tongue roll. I can just move it from side to side. And of course, I can twist that as well. And that's not creepy at all. <laughs> okay, that works. Getting the job done. Really, there is nothing to it. I'm just going to actually bring the upper and lower teeth back. So with that, all we need to do is to cover some expressions and we're pretty much done for this course. I hope you use these techniques for your own characters and see you in the next video.